Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation titled Automated Aerobics Based Road Conditions Assessment. My name is Andres Rosales Castellanos, I'm a PhD student here at the University of Alberta. So we're going to go over some topics here, background objectives and scope, methodology results, conclusions, and finally some acknowledgements. Firstly, uh, road conditions are very important for a traveler. Then we want to know whether the road is icy, snowy, or just uh, if it's clear. So uh, this helps to anticipate and plan accordingly for a safer trip and leads to a uh, reduction of the incidents ultimately. Uh, in Alberta and many places in North America, there are some systems in place which use some manual reporting that is, uh, uh, that it would be in the case of 511 Alberta, a user-based reporting system which uh, where users will find a uh, will report themselves the condition of the road. Then an operator will validate this assessment and place this uh, report in the system. So this could lead to, to some problems in incomplete information. Uh, it's not always prompt, maybe not as accurate. So it could be helped if we add more data sources, more spatial and temporal coverage. Automated reporting of road conditions would help a lot in the case of uh, reducing human error and increasing accuracy, and there would also be the uh, advantage of real-time feasibility. So the goal is to develop a system that automates road conditions reporting. The objective is to develop an automated tool that predicts road conditions in an efficient manner, and the scope is to use uh, an automate or uh, develop an automated road conditions assessment system that can use data from different sources and uh, to encompass the different climatic conditions in Alberta. So for the methodology, Alberta has an extensive network of uh, ROE stations located throughout the province. That is uh, all over the place. So usually they would be uh, in most areas or at least uh, the main highways, they would be located about 40 kilometers from each other. There is a bit of a gap. But they are very useful. They can provide a lot of uh, data for, for assessing the conditions of the road. So uh, what we propose here is to collect data from ROE stationary and mobile ROE stations uh, along with uh, mobile edge computing, uh, then process it through a support vector machine to uh, classify finally the road conditions in in this case, it will be uh, two outcomes, dry road or ice warning. This would be mostly in uh, winter conditions. So uh, in that way, the final user, the driver, could get a warning if the conditions are not very favorable. So a uh, support vector machine uh, pretty much uh, separates data in, and it uses support vectors. So you draw a margin or a hyperplane where you uh, uh, the, the 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 data points on either side of the margin will have a different classification sometimes the data is a bit hard or the hyperplane is a bit hard to 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 to, to find so it is important to use a kernel in this case we used a gaussian kernel uh, sometimes the best hyperplane that you can find is not easy to find. You will need to add more dimensions to be able to separate class, classes easier. And uh, in that case, then you would need to bring it back to the two-dimensional space. However, that's a little computationally expensive. So that's why we use a, a kernel to, to, to go around that. Uh, so the support vector machine analysis here was performed on a set of 200,000 plus observations of our stationary ROE stations. And uh, these were divided into five subsets to make it more manageable. Observations involving only dry or ice warning conditions out of all the observations. 80% were used for training purposes and 20% for testing purposes. Training and testing comprising including an excluding subsurface dip in shallow temperature. Temperature validation was also performed to minimize errors and Gaussian kernel was performed. So all in all, uh, the, there were 
the data was divided into five sets and we would we were able to 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 perform some classification in these five different data sets that we uh, separated uh, we found uh, the optimal C and gamma parameters for these uh, sets and finally we obtained an average overall accuracy of 96.63% which is pretty good and uh, so finally in conclusion the support vector machine managed to provide a high accuracy for predicting road surface conditions the selected features from the RV stations were humidity, pressure, atmosphere, precipitation rate, pavement temperature, subsurface deep temperature, and subsurface shallow temperature. However, these last two could be redundant, so we could do without them. And the analysis could be performed in uh, mobile edge computing position along the road, receiving data from stationary and mobile RVs. Then the final assessment can be sent to vehicles along the road to provide information on all road conditions. Uh, in the future, we're going, we're going to do some dynamic segmentation to combine data from mobile and stationary routers, and also obtain canvas, canvas data from the vehicle to enhance the data collected from our RWIS. Special thanks are given to Dr. Tony Q, University of Alberta, the Government of Alberta, and IBI Group. Thank you.